Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. Well, today we're going to install something called the Flow 636 Enduratec Integrated Water Drain Down System. So, Lippert sent this out for me for uh, install and review. This is the mobile version. This one runs off of 12 volts. There's also 120 volt. Basically, what this thing does is you install it in the RV hook it up to 12 volts this one or the 120 volt and uh, plumb it into your system there's a little compressor in this box I believe pumps air into your water plumbing so that you can quickly winterize the RV so much like blowing out the lines with a, an external compressor this is one that installs on board so it's always there Anyway, let's take the box apart and see what kind of pieces we have. I'm going to install this today in my freshwater system and give her a try. Okay, there's all the pieces. There's the main piece, the unit. They'll have to be mounted somewhere close to the water pump, going by the instructions. And then they give you quite a bit of air hose there. A couple different power options. We have a cigarette light lighter type deal and then there's 13 feet of wire it's got a fuse on it so you can hook it into your 12 volt system permanently somewhere they all have also have an external switch and little doodads for mounting then we have an on off for the air and this is the piece that'll hook into the water system so this has got a valve in it so you hook it into your water system and uh, when you uh, turn it on it'll push air through all the plumbing and we got these things to hook into the hose instruction manual and a, a little towel that they give you for marketing I guess so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be installing mine right near the water pump here it's going to be lots of variables and different rigs, but my water pump actually lives down right in there. On my Cougar, it was kind of a little triangle carpeted thing, but I actually changed it a few years back and modified it and made a, a bigger enclosure. But I think what I'm going to do is mount that green box. We usually hang jackets over here, and I'm going to mount it behind the jacket. And it'll run the hose back in there and hook into my water should make it pretty easy anyway let me get all this stuff out of the way and read some more instructions and we'll go to town on hooking this up so I have pulled off the little cabinet that I had made and you can see my situation here with the water pump where they installed it, it sits on the floor here um, this is the water feed going into my fresh water tank from the outside where I fill it this a uh, white hose right here is coming up from the water tank and you can see I have an existing uh, winterizing kit this is where I would put uh, antifreeze so the pump could pump antifreeze into the system so that's going to be an ideal location to insert this new gadget because you have to open up a line and then insert its uh, valve in there so I'll be able to just undo that and put in the valve uh, if you wonder why I got so much hosing, I have it looped around just to, to keep the pump a little bit quieter by looping the, the, the hosing around like that. Anyway, I think I'm going to mount this right up on the wall here. Not ideal, but uh, it's blocked by the jackets. And also then I can get a straight shot because you have to run the air line down into there so it can come straight down. And all the line won't have to do any big curves or anything as far as the airline goes. So first things first is what they want you to do is install this into the airline. They want you to heat that up with a hair dryer so it gets pliable and then you can jam that up into the airline there. Okay, that took quite a bit of finagling to get it in there. I didn't get it all the way in there, it's just too tight. I think that's going to be enough. And this thing goes on like this. There we go. This looks like a safety valve just so the water can't come back up and get into the, the flow unit. 
So rather than using the screws and the screw holes provided to mount it, I'm going to go with the uh, outdoor uh, 3M mounting tape just in case I change my mind about the location. That way I'm not uh, putting holes in my walls or anything. I can always get that off. The trick is a little bit of fishing line. You cut through it and you clean off all the old goop. Anyway, let's get that mounted up there. Well, they give you about 13 feet of this air hose. I won't need very much at all because I'm just going straight down there. They also give you a uh, elbow in case you have to go horizontally with it. This is just a shark bite type connector, so you just push it in and it connects down there, just like that. Now I gotta open up the water line and install the, the valve that's down there. So in that T there's a valve and uh, it should stop any water from going back up and this is sort of a secondary safety valve just in case. Okay, so I removed my old winterizing valve and installed the new plastic parts here. Same deal, just heated that up with a hair dryer so they're easy to put on, did them up with hose clamps. Now this piece goes in and you want the fatter end to be going, so let me check the manual here. That goes towards the tank and the shorter end goes towards the faucet. So this is coming up for my fresh water tank. That simply presses on like that. And this is going to press on like that. And then the air hose should fit in like that. I'm just going to cut a little bit off that just so it's perfectly aligned. Okie doke, all hooked back up. Let's give her a leak test here. Good, no leaks. So we'll put our uh, cabinet back together and then we can get to uh, testing out this uh, flow unit. There we be. Now this should just go on like that. Perfect. Looks like that doesn't squish that pipe or anything, so that's going to work out good. Now I had sort of a unique arrangement. Uh, most RVs, the water pump is located, you know, under the kitchen sink cabinet or somewhere in the basement storage where you have a lot more options of where you're going to mount that flow unit and stuff like that so this is what I had to do. So let's get to testing this. Next we're going to need power for the compressor in there. <clears throat> so there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, it comes with a, a cigarette lighter type adapter and uh, there's 13 feet of cable so if your adapter your receptacle in your RV is close to that you can just plug it in. You could also take this cable and hardwire it. You could cut off the ends there, find positive and negative. Uh, the fuse side is positive. There's a 15 amp fuse in there. And then you could wire that in. But you want to make sure whatever line you pick is capable of providing enough amperage. Most lo DC lines in an RV can handle 15 amps, but if it's running a bunch of other stuff at the same time, it may, uh, may not uh, have thick enough wiring. But overall it should work. But I'm not going to go that route because I'm in an awkward area here. There's nowhere where I could do that without running lines all over the place. So I'm going to use this little uh, power pack I have for my, it's a booster box, a NOCO. I got this for Christmas a few years ago and it's been handy for all sorts of things other than jump starting your car. It can put out 15 amps at 12 volts so it's ideal. That'll make it easy for me. So let's just give her a try, see if it'll power it. Turn the box on. Yeah, sounds like it'll power it, no problem. Just for a little extra info, I thought I'd try this Jackery box. It's your typical uh, power box you get nowadays. The downfall of a lot of these is they don't really have huge uh, DC output current. That was one of the negatives I said about this. I think it's like 5 or 7 amps. So when you need to power something a little larger, you saw my other box did it no problem. But let's uh, show you this when the Jackery tries to power it. 
Yeah, basically the voltage is too low and it shuts the box down. So that's a no-go there using that or probably any other of these little power boxes. You could always bring a battery in and clip it up too. First thing the instructions say to do is locate the winterizing bypass valve on your water heater. You can see mine right down there. So I'm going to switch that to a bypass mode. If I was winterizing the rig, I'd be draining the water heater as well. So I'll switch that over. There we go, now it's pointing straight up. So mine just uses one valve because there's a check valve in, in the output of the, the heater. Some other arrangements have multiple valves to do the job. Now I've got to open up all my valves, all my cold and hot water, in the bathroom and the shower and the outside shower, that sort of thing. Let it run out. And we can go over and uh, pressurize the system here. Just turn this valve to on. There we go. Sounds like it pressurized pretty quick. It says it can take 30 to 45 seconds sometimes. Okay, let's open this. And see. It seems to be pushing more water out. And once it depressurizes, it turns on and repressurizes the line. Close it and it repressurizes. Let's just go to the hot side. Now it's repressurized the line. So the good part about this box is you don't have to keep running back and forth, you know, turning your compressor on and off. So it's easy to do one person. Let's try a few other taps. Bathroom sink. Next, I'll try the outside shower. That's one good thing about being loud, I can hear it inside. Pump some water out of there. little trick I can do is I can turn my outside shower on here. I have the hose connected to my black tank flush so the air is going to push any water that might be in the line or especially that check valve in the black tank flusher system that often cracks. To push it all through. Yeah. You can hear it coming on. I can tell it's uh, pushing that water through. Another thing we'd want to undo is the low point drains. Yours may have a valve, mine just come off. Unscrew here, that should push all the water out of those. Hey, you can feel the pressure when I took it off.
can hear this thing running. See the air being pushed. Now it should pressurize and stop. So it's working correctly. There we be, all installed and tested out, working good. You can see why I mounted it there, because that's our kind of jacket ha hanging area, so you won't even see it at all. So what do I think of this thing? Well, it does the job. Um, I like that it has the PSI limitation so you don't hurt your RV plumbing. A uh, really quick and easy way to, to, to winterize the RV. Or even if you wanted to refresh the water, you know, if the water sits in your RV for a week or two, it can get kind of skanky in the pipes, so it's a good way to get rid of the old water out of it. Uh, as far as cost goes, I find it's a pretty expensive $250 on the, the Lippard store right now, which, you know, it's a niche product and some people don't care. They just want something that works and is really easy to hook up. Other guys are going to say, look it inside. There's not very many parts and the hardware to it. And uh, a DIY guy could probably uh, MacGyver himself something similar for a lot less money. That's probably the only drawback to it is, is the pricing of it. It's kind of an interesting little gadget. And also you can winterize your RV in other ways. You can, of course, do the old antifreeze method. And even when you use this, you're going to have to put a little bit of antifreeze in the P-traps. It doesn't blow out the drains or anything. And uh, some people use compressors or bicycle pumps, all sorts of other ways. The one nice thing about this is once you turn it on, it automatically turns itself on and off. So you can go around just as one person. You don't have to say, is it going? And then turn it on and run back and forth or have a helper. So that's one advantage of it. So I give it a thumbs up for that and kind of a thumbs down for the, the cost. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.